Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Chuck Schultz from Michigan Sawmill Sales. Today I have a Timbery M120, and this is our demo unit. Uh, I've run uh, probably about four or five logs through it. Uh, I want to talk today about the blade lubrication system on it, uh, which is basically just a tank and a, a hose that runs down. And then comes up and drips on the blade, which is typical with most band mills. Uh, and you know, what we decided to try out, uh, we'll backtrack a little bit. Uh, everybody always asks me, so what do you run through the system to lubricate the blade or to cool the blade? Usually it's to cool the blade, but the real answer is it's for blade lubrication and keeping the blade clean. Um, it's not so much for keeping it cool or anything like that. Keeping the blade clean keeps the blade cool. Um, so every t a lot of times people ask me, so what do you run in the water? You know, what, what do you run in the tank here? Uh, typically, we run water, maybe a little bit of Dawn dish soap in it. And in the wintertime, we run a little bit of uh, um, windshield washer solvent. And that has a very low freezing point, so it works really well in the wintertime and stuff like that. So, uh, But I've tried, decided to try something out. I had a... Uh, a company call and reach out to me about using some of their uh, plant-based lubricants for for different things and I said well you know what I wonder if it would work for for the blades um, obviously people don't like to spend money on something that just drips on a saw blade but I wanted to do a little bit of a test uh, I've heard of different people using stuff like kerosenes and uh, diesel fuel um, I've never done that I, I I've pretty much uh, kind of would worry about what it would do to the lumber and making the lumber smell like the fuel and, and whatnot. Um, and you really, I wouldn't want a whole bunch of diesel fuel and stuff dripping through the saw and spraying out through the sawdust and everything else like that. But it would work definitely in the wintertime. But the good side about doing that is that people rave about how it keeps the blade clean and going through the lumber the way it's supposed to and doing the blade's job until it dulls out. Um, and so we've decided to use this product and I'm in testing on it right now whether or not we're going to carry it to sell it at our Michigan Sawmill Sales store. And it seems to be working really well for what I'm doing. I have not used water on the last three logs of this blade. Um, this blade has been on, this is the second blade I put on this machine because I hit uh, I hit a screw or something in, a, in the first log that went through, that it went through. So it dulled the blade out right away. Um, so I changed the blade and that's right about when I try, started testing this. Um, so what I would do is I would just spritz a little bit of oil, this plant-based oil. It's very thin. It's almost like the consistency of WD-40, but it doesn't evaporate. And it doesn't seem to be very sticky to the sawdust. It really doesn't, um, you know, want to stick to the blade and, and get a whole lot of over oil overspray all up in the housing here, which would cause a whole bunch of sawdust to stick and cling and, and clog up the uh, housing here. But as you see, I've just put... Uh, three logs through this uh, with this blade using just a little bit of oil. I spritz the roller bearing guides right here and over there and then put a little bit of uh, spritz a little bit of the oil on the blade here right right along here and then I just engage the uh, engage the clutch and, and drive belt and let the blade roll through a few rpms to get it all spun through the whole system here and then I just commence to cutting. Uh, I'll make about two to four passes um, on the log. Now I've only run uh, say 10 to 12 inch uh, pine logs through here and I figure pine would be a good way to test this out because it's got a, it has a little bit more sap to the log and so it would probably burnish on the blade teeth right here um, and th it would just be a good uh, species of wood to try it on. So I did, ran three logs through it, um, come back this morning, the blade was shiny just like this. It had rained last night. I purposely let, let, it, let the machine stay uncovered. Um, a lot of times when guys will stop using their sawmill, they'll come out the next day, even if it don't rain, and between 
the guides or the roller bearings there and there, uh, the blade would just be covered in oxidation all the way through. And it's not a big deal once you run the, run the cycle, you know, engage and run it a little bit uh, uh, and maybe start cutting all the little bit of rust oxidation kind of goes away. Uh, but what's really nice, what I found out, is that the housing stays very, very clean. Uh, when you run water or any type of uh, blade lubricant in here, you, the, the sawdust gets real heavy and wet and even sticks in here. Now, our logs we were sawing have been sitting around for about six months, so maybe that had a little bit to do with it. They're not as green as, uh, they're not fresh cut, uh, but they've been sitting for about six months. Um, so they're a little drier than a freshly cut green log, but I've never really opened up the housing of a sawmill and had just that little bit of dust uh, just crouched in there. So it it seems to be performing really well. I'm going to run uh, some tests on some hardwood and stuff too before I really release what I'm what I want to do with this product um, and start possibly even selling it uh, for basically sawmill care. Um, it's a good thing to do like before you shut the machine down say you're running your last log your last cut you know shut the disengage the drive spritz these areas here by your roller bearing guides a little bit on the blade and on that roller bearing guide and then just engage it for a few seconds and then shut her down and it seems to do the trick uh, the roller bearing guides come back very clean the next morning now you can notice a little bit of oxidation on the face of this bearing right here, this roller bearing guide. And uh, it just probably didn't get a whole lot of oil on it just because I'm squirting it from the back side this way. So it's only getting on this face and on the blade. But as you see, I don't know how well the camera works, but you know the blade is very, very clean. There's nothing on the teeth. This blade is virtually like brand spanking new. I mean, it just it, it it performs very well. Now I don't like I said I don't know how it'll perform on the big logs with a with a lot of use, and I'm going to test that out. Um, but uh, it seems to be working very very well, and uh, kind of kind of impressed with how it works. So stay watching our channel a little bit if you could. And uh, for a couple future videos, I'm going to see how long I can get this blade to last and how, how clean it stays. And, you know, um, but I think it'll work out pretty well. Thanks a lot, guys. Um, I'm Chuck Schultz, Michigan Sawmill Sales. We sell timbery saws, timbery band saws, and we sell Black's Creek firewood processors. So if you or anybody you know uh, may be in the market for firewood processor, we got many different... Uh, models available. Uh, this is the 1250 model. Um, and uh, this machine here is 